20 years after her birth, Dolly the Sheep has earned her own museum exhibit, highlighting her celebrity status in the world of genetics. <laughs> she was the first animal cloned from a single adult cell, one cell taken from the mammary gland of a donor sheep, then implanted in a surrogate to produce an exact genetic copy of the original. Now, scientists aren't just making copies of organisms, they're creating different versions of them. And a powerful new tool is shifting biology and genetic engineering into overdrive. Wow, so this is really exciting actually. I think this is really just going to speed research up um, in a new way and making new things possible. A technology that enables scientists to edit humans, rewrite our genetic code, and literally alter who we are. It's been called game-changing, the biggest biotech discovery of the century, with the potential to cure some cancers and inherited diseases and revolutionize how we treat deadly infections such as HIV AIDS a breakthrough co-invented by Jennifer Doudna at the University of California, Berkeley. I think the CRISPR technology is just, you know, it's, it's very exciting because it's going to enable a lot of science to be done that was impossible to do in the past. CRISPR is a tool that allows easy and precise editing of our DNA, the genetic blueprint held inside every one of our cells. It stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. Originally discovered in bacteria, CRISPR are short bits of DNA that make up part of its natural defense system. They're essentially a flag. They're sort of like, look at me here, notice this. This is foreign invader DNA. When this sequence comes in the cell, you should fight it. When a bacteria encounters a virus with DNA it's seen before, it sends out a guided seek and destroy missile. On board two strands of RNA, one of them carrying a copy of invading virus DNA. Also on board, a protein called Cas9, an enzyme that can cut DNA. When the guiding RNA pinpoints its target, the Cas9 moves in and snips the DNA like a kind of molecular scissors, disabling the virus. Researchers soon recognized that they could engineer this immune response to target whatever gene they want, even in humans. Editing out a genetic mutation that can cause cancer, for example, replacing it with healthy DNA the genetic equivalent of cut and paste in word processing. It affords incredible opportunities, not just to do basic research, but great potential for new cures in new ways that were not possible before. So there have been other gene editing technologies before CRISPR. They haven't been as specific or as easy to use, um, but already one of those has been used um, to cure cancer in a baby. One-year-old Layla Richards was dying of leukemia when conventional treatments failed. Doctors used a form of gene editing. Layla was free of cancer in just months, a world first. What CRISPR promises are many other stories like Layla's, helping people with a wide range of debilitating or fatal diseases. I've worked with families and children who have T these some of these terrible genetic conditions and the profound effect it has on their lives I can't even begin to understand but if there is some hope for these families um, of really um, being able to help them that's amazing. Scientists around the world are also looking at ways of using CRISPR to eliminate malaria and Zika, to produce drought resistant crops and to exterminate invasive species like the Asian carp in North America's lakes and rivers. The technology is so versatile, it's estimated that most genetic engineering labs in the world are now using CRISPR.
it's widely available. It's very, it's relatively inexpensive to use it. You don't need special skills beyond uh, sort of a basic knowledge of molecular biology to use it. There's really not going to be a way to put the genie back in the bottle, I would say. In fact, the genie is well out. Ever since the technology was discovered, orders have increased dramatically at AdGene, a kind of non-profit bank that distributes plasmids. Plasmids are small pieces of bacterial DNA that scientists use to help with the gene editing process. Every day, about 550 plasmids are packed into somewhere between 250 and 300 orders, um, 85 different countries. Based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the AdGene team has already sent more than 60,000 CRISPR-related molecular tools to researchers around the world. Some in Korea, China, Brazil, Argentina. Some things are so hot that a scientist will speak about it at a conference and people will call us and say, do you have this thing yet? And we'll be like, no, here's the wait list. Until recently, CRISPR trials have been confined to the lab, but a group of researchers at the University of Pennsylvania has received initial approval to begin human trials. This first cautious step won't be to treat cancer, but to determine the safety of using CRISPR to edit genes in humans. The technology isn't foolproof. Right now, CRISPR editing isn't always accurate. Scientists are still trying to perfect the technology and work through the ethical questions it raises, including the big one. Should we edit living human embryos? And if so, where do we draw the line? If you do the editing in adult tissues, those are changes that are made in a, an individual, but they're not passed on to progeny, to children. And so that's very different than if you make permanent changes that are actually going to affect the evolution of a species such as humans. The big concern for people is, are we going to at some point move down a eugenic road? Um, are we playing God? Are we doing too much? Researchers in China have already experimented with CRISPR in non-viable embryos. A controversial move that split the scientific community and left some wondering if we're moving too fast. I don't think that it would be appropriate to use this technology, at least today, for any kind of clinical application in human embryos. There I would like to see um, our society draw a line and say that, you know, we won't go there right now. Twenty years ago, Dolly opened up a whole new world of possibilities, prompting profound ethical questions. CRISPR is doing the same. And as its use becomes more routine, researchers will have to decide how and when to use the new technology, a technology with the power to change the course of human evolution.